this is such a difficult topic. You know, a young man looks forward to his chupa. And I'll, I'll just, I'll be blunt, even though this is a mixed audience, and say, for many young men, they look forward to their chuppas. Meichlin lay alkal of a nesav in a very practical way that they struggled uh, with chatas nurim, uh, which the sins of youth are called sins of youth for a reason, because uh, youth is a time when most people struggle to some degree. And they look forward to their, their chuppah as a time when finally it's going to be an end to this, this cycle of guilt and indulgence and further guilt and further further indulgence. And then what happens is they realize that now they're just doing the same stuff as a married man, and they feel even more guilt, which often leads to even more indulgence. Uh, the guilt indulgence cycle is well uh, explained in chapter 26 of Tanya, uh, but I won't elaborate right now. The, it's a vicious cycle of a person feeling emotional pain due to the guilt over previous moral failings, and then that causes greater indulgence in order to experience a fleeting pleasure which will cover up the pain, but then that fleeting pleasure, uh, because of its immorality, brings on greater emotional pain due to the guilt incurred. It just becomes a vicious cycle. Um, so this is a delicate subject. I'm going to say it bluntly. I think that the way a lot of our young men are prepared for married life, whether it's through explicit messaging or even implicit messaging, is that um, there's this terrible, dirty part of human nature that um, you have to suppress, and then you're going to get married, and then you can take that terrible, dirty part of human nature, and whatever it is that you wanted to do, now you can do it with that person. And that's a very confusing message. It's a very confusing message. Like, hold on, this thing that I felt such guilt about before because I attached feelings of, of, of immorality to it. Now you're telling me in the relationship with this person, I'm supposed to cherish and admire and, 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 and look up to as the, the mother of my children or, or future children. Now I'm supposed to take this, this, this dirty thing and, and, and do that in that relationship. It's very confusing. It's very, very confusing. Um, so then, you know, the, the other extreme, which is quite common in society at large, not in the from world, but in the society at large, the way that they dealt with that confusion is they went to the other extreme and they said, no, it's always good. It's always, yeah, uh, there's, uh, there, there are no restrictions. It's just whatever you want, you do it. And there's no guilt at all. Right. Well, <laughs> that, uh, that also is terribly destructive. So where where are you supposed to find a happy medium? Like, how do you negotiate this really complex aspect of, of, of the human experience? So here's what I'll explain. And my, my explanation is specifically geared toward men. Um, if you're a woman, don't try to apply this to yourself but you could try to understand it in order to have greater insight about men. Men, as we mentioned, are uh, in the role of mashpia. A mashpia is a provider. A provider is not a taker. It's the opposite of a taker. When a man turns toward his wife to use her for pleasure, he is putting himself in the role of a taker, and it feels degrading to him. Um, not to mention feels objectifying to her. She feels degraded. But primarily right now, I'm focusing on his experience of it. He may find it pleasurable, at least in, 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 the, in the very um, short term, but ultimately he finds it 
incompatible with his very essence as a mashpia, as a provider, because he's not providing for her, he's taking from her. Remember that the the mitzvah that a that a married man has to provide intimacy for his wife is just that. It's a it's a mitzvah to provide it. In fact, it's a it's a lav. It's a prohibition not to withhold it from her when she wants it. So really, the entire thing is about him being a giver. It's all about him providing the conjugal rights for her. It's not about him taking from her. And when he takes from her, he ends up feeling like a a failure as a mashpia. Even if he doesn't articulate it that way, he might he might not have language for that. But subconsciously, he'll he'll sense it, and it that's why the proof of that is that he's dissatisfied immediately afterwards, and he he feels like he needs it right right away again because it doesn't hit the spot. Because a mashpia can only be satisfied by giving, not by taking. So here's the thing: when you're a bacher, you have no way of giving intimacy. There's no recipient in your life. So therefore, everything that you do in the realm of human intimacy is by definition, the act of taking. So when a Bacher looks where he shouldn't look, whether it's at people or at pixels, he's taking. He's taking from that object or he's turning someone into an object and taking from them, which is degrading not only to the person he's objectifying, but like I said, it's it's degrading to the to the man as well. So a bacher has no outlet to be a giver in the realm of human intimacy. A younger man has a wife. Now he has an opportunity to be a giver. Now he has someone to give intimacy to, but it's only healthy and it's only functional and it only promotes positive self-regard when he does it as a giver. In other words, if he turns her into just another form of self-indulgence, then he'll feel as empty and dissatisfied with his relationship with her as he did when he was going to outlets which are inherently illicit. So it's really important that we build up men to know how to be providers of intimacy. I think that our chassanim, our young grooms-to-be, need to be prepared to understand that when you get married, it's not like you're a kid in the candy store, and all of a sudden, that thing which was off limits, all of a sudden, it's like the looting, you know, like smash the plate glass window and start grabbing TVs, right? Like a feeding frenzy. That's the way a lot of the Bachram feel about it when they get married. Oh, goody. Now I'm going to get to go to town. And in the end, she feels objectified. You feel degraded and nobody's happy and no one's satisfied. But if we can train Bachram to understand that there's something inherently valuable that you as a man have to provide to your wife, Ali Sheikh Chuka Sheikh. She, she wants this. Of course she wants this. And if she doesn't want it, then stop a second and look within and understand what you as the man may not be doing to provide a safe space for the macabre, for the woman, to want to receive what it is that you have to offer. Okay, so this is a very complex subject, something that we really need to discuss at length. But ultimately... It's about empowering men to understand that intimacy isn't something you take from your wife. Intimacy is something that you, as a man, step up and provide to her. And when you do that, you feel more self-respect, you feel holier, you feel like more of a mensch, and not the like uh, all these negative shame-based feelings that you feel um, when, when, when you're a bacher who's inherently doing things that are forbidding because there is no kosher outlet. So we, you, you have to you have to teach the chassanim. Really, we need to have, we, I'll add to the list of cultural changes that really need to happen. We need to have real serious emotional preparation and training for every, every bacher who gets engaged so that he knows how to enter an intimate relationship as a real giver.